Hi everyone, I'm Lauren from Peas in a Pod. So we're officially in spring, which means wedding season is just around the corner. Now, if you're like me, you've already been invited to a few summer weddings. And you might be wondering about all of the events leading up to the wedding. So I'm not gonna spend this video talking about weddings in particular, just because there's so much to talk about that we really wouldn't have time. Instead, I'm gonna focus on one very specific thing, the bridal shower. Now, when you think of parties that lead up to the wedding, you're probably thinking about the bachelorette party and the bachelor party. And while those are both very important American traditions, the bridal shower is a little bit different. So the bridal shower, while they can be co-ed, which means both men and women can attend, typically they are women only. And the people that are invited are women who are invited to the wedding, but are also close to the bride in some way. So friends, family, people that, um, you know, she feels a connection to. And this is a little bit different from the bachelorette party in that the bachelorette party tends to really only have very close friends of the bride. Whereas the bridal shower, there's a much larger guest list and it tends to include um, some extended family members as well, which you probably wouldn't see in the bachelorette party. So you get invited to a bridal shower. Now what do you do? Well, the first thing you want to do is RSVP. Sometimes people wait to the last minute to RSVP and that can be really annoying for the people planning the party. So it's important to get your RSVP in early and let people know that you are able to attend. The next thing you want to do is offer to help in some way. If they're having the party at someone's home, you can offer to bring food or you can offer to help with decorations or setting up or taking down. The next thing you want to do is check the bride and groom's bridal registry. Now on the invitation, there should be one or two stores listed that the bride and groom have registered at. Now this means that they've gone into the store and have specifically picked out items that they want. And on their registry, they list what brand it is, the color, how many they want, and it makes sure that the gifts that they receive are things that the bride and groom really actually want and are going to use. So it's really important to check out the registry and make sure that you're buying things off of that. Now, what do you do if they don't have a registry, which some couples don't? Well, what you can do is buy some traditional uh, bridal shower gifts. Now, these tend to be things that you would consider housewarming gifts. So dish sets, um, cookware, uh, things for their living room or for their bathroom, things that will allow the new couple to really make their home their own. Now at the shower, you'll probably know some of the guests, but more likely than not, most of them will be complete strangers to you. There'll be friends that you've never met before and family members that you maybe never even heard of. So what do you talk to them about? Well, luckily enough, you have something in common with every single person at that party, the bride and the groom. So ask people, how do they know the couple? Tell funny stories about the couple, like maybe how you met or some fun activities that you and the bride and the groom have done together and talk about the upcoming wedding. And you can even talk about how weddings are celebrated in your home country. Another thing that you'll find at every bridal shower are bridal games. 
So at my friend's bridal shower, which was just this last weekend, I was the person in charge of making all of the games. So the ones that I did, I wanted to be fun and not cheesy, which is actually pretty hard to do for bridal games. If you're looking up ideas for them, a lot of them tend to be a little sappy um, and not a lot of fun. <laughs> So it's, it's a bit of a challenge to make games that people are going to enjoy and not be bored by. So one game that's really popular is Wedding Taboo. So at the beginning of the bridal shower, everyone will get three or four clothespins to attach to their clothes. And then throughout the shower, they're not allowed to say certain words. Now, we chose the word wedding, but some people will do the word bride or groom or marriage. It doesn't matter. It's words that would typically come up at a bridal shower. And every time someone says a word that's taboo, you get to steal their clothespin. And the person with the most clothespins at the end of the party wins. A date night jar is a really fun way to give your friends some ideas for different dates that they can go on after they get married. So things like have a Nerf gun fight in the house, loser cooks dinner. That was the one I suggested. Uh, it can also be things like go to a restaurant that you've never been to before or go on a three hour hike. So it's really just giving the couple ideas of ways to connect and to continue to connect and grow their relationship after they get married. Another really fun game is Ring Hunt. So this is where you'll hide fake engagement rings around the shower and people have to look for them throughout the party. And the person with the most rings at the end wins a prize. At pretty much every bridal shower, there's going to be some game that has to do with marriage advice. Now these games tend to be really cheesy and not a lot of fun. And when you have a couple that's been together for a really long time, they pretty much know how to make a relationship work. There's not a lot of things that people can add as far as advice goes. So one thing that I did to still have that traditional game, but make it a little bit more fun for us is I did a Mad Libs version. So one example of marriage advice that you often see in these games is something like give each other compliments every day. And while that's great advice, it's really boring for a game. So. One way that Mad Libs can make it a little bit more interesting is by having the compliments be random. So for example, the advice would read something like this. Give each other compliments every day. Call each other cute names like delicious cookie or slimy pineapple. So because the words are chosen at random, there's really no reason to them and it can make for some really interesting compliments. Um, some can actually be really sweet, like delicious cookie, which was one of the compliments chosen for this one, and others can be really weird. So there are a lot of traditional events leading up to a wedding in America. And I hope now that you understand the bridal shower a little bit better than you did before. And if you get invited to one, that you feel more confident about what to do when it comes to the gift and what to expect at the shower and some ideas of what to talk about at the shower itself. If you've liked this episode, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to our channel for great content. We come out with new episodes every Friday. And if you want to listen to us on the go, be sure to check out our podcast and visit our website to learn more about us and more ways that you can increase your cultural literacy. I'm Lauren from Peas in a Pod and thank you for watching.